today's the day we get to go grocery shopping. I've been wanting to do this vlog for a long time. So we're gonna go in the grocery store, make our way around. I'm gonna show you good choices, bad choices. We got good, better, and best, and we're gonna work our way through it. Let's check it out. What I tell my clients is that you need to shop around the perimeter of the grocery store. That's where the real food is. The packaged processed foods are normally found on the inside aisles. A normal grocery store has about 47,000 different products. We're not going to go through them all today. We're going to hit the real food and show you how to shop and read labels. Supermarkets have a very definite architecture to them. The, uh, it's a, like a treacherous place to shop, if, especially if you're trying to eat healthy. You notice that they put the milk at the furthest corner from the front door as possible so that you have to shop, walk through the entire store to get to the milk. And you notice also that at eye level, those are the most profitable items that they have in a grocery store. Grocery stores are really set up to get the most dollars from your pocket. The, the spacing of the products, the location, the lighting, kind of like a casino, you know. They want you to stay in here as long as possible and spend the most money. Sometimes buying healthy food can be a little more expensive, but you'll notice that the less you spend on food, the more you're going to have to spend on health care. We've never had food companies this powerful in our history. So much of what you buy in a grocery store is just a rearrangement of corn and wheat and soy and vegetable oil. I recommend eating real food, kind of like how our ancestors ate. Our diet, the human diet, has changed more in the past 50 years than in the past 10,000 years. The way the food industry makes money is by processing food, by adding soy and wheat and corn and vegetable oil to it. I mean, you could buy a potato for 69 cents a pound, or you could buy french fries for $10 a pound. So in general, the more processed a food is, the less of a nutritional value that it has. If you see it on a commercial, pretty good bet that it's processed. Don't buy it. You may not feel you have much power to change this, but when you purchase food, that's voting, and your vote counts. When you go into a grocery store, you're going to see on the perimeter aisles produce. Now, you're going to find these stickers on the produce. They're PLU codes, price lookup codes. If it's a four digit, number that starts with a four, it means it's conventionally grown. If it starts with a three, it means it's been irradiated. If it starts with a nine, it means it's organic. So what is irradiated food? Irradiated food is food that's been, some people call it nuking. It could just be simply UV radiation. It helps to sanitize the food and to kill the bacteria, and it also slows down the ripening process so it lasts longer on the shelves. A good way to look at the numbers on the PLU codes is to think of this little rhyme that nine is good, eight not so good, three or four wash for sure. So when you're shopping in a grocery store, the produce section is pretty much a free-for-all. You can eat anything in this section. You do want to watch out for things that are not organic. Uh, just wash your vegetables very well. If you're wondering whether or not it's GMO or whether it is a, uh, a vegetable or fruit that is more susceptible to being having pesticides on it. I have included a link here in this post that you can go to to find those type of items. Now we're at my favorite place, the meat and fish department. Uh, one of the things you want to look for is wild caught fish, especially salmon for those omega-3s. Wild caught is always best because if it's farm raised, they're just eating corn and wheat, you know, that stuff that uh, I don't even want you eating. So if you shouldn't be eating it, what you're eating shouldn't be eating it. And that goes the same for the cows and the, and the beef that you eat. It should be grass fed, that would be best. If you can't afford that or just don't have access to that, you can buy regular natural red meat or just cut off the fat because that's where a lot of the toxins are. But if it's grass fed, you can eat the whole thing. So what we have here is the processed meat aisle. I pretty much 
skip this aisle. You can find some bacon here that is nitrate free, and I suppose that that would be better. You know, best, of course, would be Benton's bacon. Everybody knows, who's here in Tennessee, knows about Benton's bacon. It doesn't have nitrates in it, and it comes straight from the farm. Um, or, what you can do is buy some processed meat here. Uh, if you look at a label, basically, if it has a label, it's not best. The best foods are the the real foods, foods with no labels. Um, this happens to be uh, some kind of hot dog here. Uh, has pork, water, sorbic acid, phosphate, corn syrup, potassium, lactate, sugar, MSG, uh, all kinds of things. Uh, this isn't really real food. I kind of the bulk of your diet coming from the produce section and the meat and the fish section, the next thing you want to look at is for nuts and seeds to, to use as snacks. Uh, what you want to be aware of is when you buy nuts and seeds, you should try to look for raw, which means that they haven't had, they don't have like the added oils and they haven't been cooked in the industrial seed oils. Or if they do have raisins and that kind of thing added to it, that the raisins haven't been coated in sugar. The problem with all these low-fat foods, these healthy foods, is that they're loaded with sugar. This low-fat yogurt here has 33 grams of sugar in it. If you consider that there are four grams per teaspoon, then this yogurt has eight teaspoons of sugar in it. As far as cheeses are concerned, low fat is best. They try to make that low fat too. And when they make cheeses low fat, they just have to add a bunch of ingredients to it. The ingredients, we've got an ingredient list here that's about, we've got about enzymes, pasteurized milk, cheese culture, starch, powdered cellulose. It's not cheese. I would recommend if you're going to eat cheese to try to eat raw cheese because it has the enzymes that help to digest if, you have a tr if you're having problems with milk. Other than that, um, just watch out for all the ingredients on the cheese and make sure what you're getting is real cheese. When it comes to the butter aisle, you have a lot of choices here. What I prefer is to stick to real butter and especially if I can get it from a farm that would be best. If you can't get it from a farm you can find organic salted or unsalted butter in most grocery stores. It's a much better choice than margarine which has trans fats, chemicals and it's just not real food. So when I get to the butter aisle and the red meat aisle the question that I usually get is what about all that saturated fat? Doesn't that cause heart disease? I've got news for you. Saturated fat does not cause heart disease. Inflammation causes heart disease. Talk about milk for a little while. I go a little crazy. I actually drive to a farm and get raw milk. I own part of a cow. That, to me, is best if you can handle dairy. Some people can't handle dairy. They cannot digest the sugar that's in dairy or they cannot handle the milk protein that is in dairy. So if you can't, then don't eat dairy. But if you can, you know, raw is best. You can also, there's a certain type of milk that they sell here in, uh, in Marigold, Cruz Dairy Milk, and it's pasteurized at a low temperature. So if I don't have access to the farm milk, I will buy Cruz Milk because it's pasteurized at a low temperature and it's also not homogenized. And I also prefer to buy full fat milk. If you're one of my clients, you know how I feel about wheat, bread, wheat in any form, crackers. Um, my suggestion is just to not eat it at all. It's not the same wheat that your grandmother ate or your ancestors ate. It's been genetically changed to grow quickly and to feed a lot of people. Anyway, it's very high in gluten. You can buy gluten-free foods, I suppose, gluten-free breads and crackers and cookies, but that still doesn't get rid of the insulin spiking effect and the weight gain that you will get, even from gluten-free types of breads. So I recommend eh, no bread. So when you're shopping, it can kind of seem overwhelming. You don't know what's good, what's healthy, what's real food. Basically, if it's in a box, a bag, or a can, it's probably processed and is full of ingredients. Um, the general rule of thumb is when you read a label, if it has more than three ingredients, you should probably just stay away from it. It's a processed food. Now, everything I talk about today is what you should try to eat on a daily basis. 
I call it the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time, eat as close to real food, eat as close to what your ancestors ate as possible. And 20% of the time, you can enjoy and eat freely, uh, give yourself a break. And one of the products that I recommend totally steering clear of are, is the, like the vegetable oil section of a grocery store and foods that have the vegetable, I call them industrial seed oils. It's better to cook with coconut oil, which can handle a high heat, ghee, which is a clarified type of butter and cooks well at a high heat. You can also use tallow or lard if it's coming from a grass-fed animal. Uh, olive oil, um, grape seed oils, those are good oils to use when you're cooking at a low heat or you're, you know, for salad dressings, using them in uh, settings like that. The thing I eat a lot of is eggs. Now we're, we're in the uh, health food section of the grocery store and we have some natural, cage-free, grain-fed. That would be a pretty good choice. Of course, the best choice would be to buy them from your local farm so you know what those chickens are really eating and how they're really living. So when I shop at a grocery store, I hit the perimeter of the grocery store, then I hit the health food section, then I go to the market in Maryville to get my grass-fed meats, uh, my produce, my local produce, I hit the farmers markets on the weekends, and then every other week I go to the farm and get my raw milk. So I hope you enjoyed my tour of the grocery store. Uh, I hope you learned something. Just remember to shop the perimeters of the grocery store and, and decrease the amount of time that you stay on the interior uh, aisles of the grocery store. And Remember that just because they boast about something as being healthy on a label doesn't mean that it really is. Thank you for joining me.